about to build the boys. We now have issue 62 of Hachette's Build the Titanic. And finally, we're back to the hull. We're installing a fairly large piece of keel to our hull section that we haven't touched for nine months. Can you believe that? Nine months. Um, which means a whole person could have been conceived and born in the time it's taken us to do more hull. Wow. Um, so we're going to be looking at um, the part itself. We're going to be installing that. There's not a lot to do in this one. There's some brackets to install, but... We are going to finally start growing the hull, which I know a lot of you have been speaking to, have been chomping at the bit to get to. Well, it looks like we're finally starting, and I think now we're rolling on that. We've got to. There's nowhere else to go. I mean, our, our deck is pretty much built at this point. We've got a few more bits to add to it. Our engine room's built. We we need we need the hull. We need to start bolting things to it and building it. And, you know, we're nearly halfway through, so it's in, important we get this done because we've got four foot of hull to build. We're nowhere near done. Um, at the end of this one, we'll be talking about art. Um, so uh, the last one we spoke about a car that was lost to Titanic. On the next one, we speak about art that was lost on the Titanic. A very expensive painting, which we'll talk all about. Um, but let's get this open. I'm very, very excited to do more hull. Okay, so here is everything we get with 62. With this very large piece of keel here. Uh, we have some screws. We have a bracket, so there's not going to be loads to do, but that's that's the nature of, of hull. So as much as we want hull, it's not very labour intensive. So we're going to bring up our main uh, part of the ship that we work on, our main part of the hull. And here she is. Um, now what's the best way for you to see this? I think we come around here. There we go. Okay. So we're going to install this part here. I just have to double check that one. So we're going in like so. There we go. That's going to lock in there. Now, I do use three in one oil for any metal to metal, and I would advise you do the same because it just makes life a lot easier when it comes to screwing these things in. Uh, it means you're not going to shear a head off or anything like that, and the resistance is going to be minimal. So we are going to screw this in place using IM screws. Now, thankfully, they're not uh, they're not Allen head. You know how I feel about Allen head, um, and they're not those. So they are a normal Phillips head, um, and I'll show you what I mean by three and one all. So there's my three and one all there. I literally touch the tip of the screw in the three and one, and that's it. So we're going to come down there like that. Let's screw this one in place. There we go, that's one. Nice and easy. Take our second one here. Touch it in the three and one. Put one in there like so. Okay, that's that one in. Yep, happy. Okay, uh, now we have one more thing to do, which is a bracket. No, uh, we don't. I don't think we're installing the bracket either. We are installing the bracket. You know what? I've done this the wrong way around. That's okay, though. So there is a bracket score in here as well, and I'll show you exactly where that goes. Let's get this into position. Okay, so taking our bracket, uh, it is going to fit over here like so. Will that hold? Yes, it will. I'm going to hold this in place with two of the AM screws. Now, again, I'm going to use the three in one oil method to uh, make the transition of screws just a little easier. Yeah, I'll just touch the tip in there. Screw number one in here. Sorry, I'm just going to close up of my wrist there. There we go, that's one. Uh, nice and easy. Okay, and then the second one, let's try and do this way. You're just going to zoom up my wrist. No, you're going to. There we go. There we are. So that's in. So that bracket's in. Because again, we are going to have to have and start and supports and whatnot for this thing. And that I would imagine that's what that is going to do. And that is all there is to do in this stage. Let's have a chat. So that's that one done, short and sweet, not loads to do, but it's nice to be working on the hull again because we're starting to get some ship and not just deck. Um, there is more hull 
come in in the next one as well and more deck work so we are doing a bit of whole bit of deck work in the next one if you are just sticking around for the build instructions thank you for stopping by please remember to a like and subscribe if you haven't yet helps channel massively and your help is very much appreciated uh those sticking around for our titanic talk just a quick one like the uh like the build instructions We're talking about artwork that was lost on board the titanic and not the one you're thinking of i'm sure the one you're thinking of is a story everyone knows of and that's this one here That was the single most expensive uh, insurance claim on Titanic. We'll talk about that one another day. What we're going to talk about is a lesser known one. Uh, so a claim went in by a Italian pastor called Emilio for a picture that he had involving this gentleman here. That is Giuseppe Garibaldi, and he was an Italian revolutionary. Now, the picture that Emilio had on board the Titanic wasn't of Giuseppe Garibaldi. Now, a lot of people think it was of him. It wasn't of him. That's kind of a, a misconception that's been kind of lost in time. What it actually was, was a picture of Emilio himself. It was a photograph of Emilio. It wasn't um, a, a portrait. It was, it was a self-portrait, but it was a photo. And the photo was taken by Giuseppe Garibaldi. So it wasn't of Giuseppe Garibaldi. It was taken by Giuseppe Garibaldi. And it was signed by him. So Giuseppe himself signed the picture of Emilio. So it was Giuseppe Garibaldi's signature on a picture of Emilio. Emilio went into the water. Now, apparently, I don't know how true this is because it sounds a little hokey. Uh, he was found clinging to an iceberg. Maybe he was. Um, initially thought he was dead. They thought he was just attached to this thing, but he wasn't. They said that he was still alive, but he was barely clinging to life. But he was, he was on an iceberg. I don't know. It's uh, That seems a little... I don't know. Maybe maybe it was. Maybe, maybe it wasn't. But that's... Um, that's the claim. So Giuseppe um, tried to claim for the photograph um, for a lot of money, I believe $60,000 he claimed the, the photograph was worth. Um, White Star Line were having none of it. So White Star Line didn't pay anywhere near that. They, they did pay, but I think it was around about $500 in compensation for that one. Nowhere near the 60000 he claimed it was worth because it wasn't worth that. It might be worth that to him, but it wasn't worth it. That said, uh, Giuseppe Garibaldi's autograph these days would be worth a lot of money. It really would. However, it wasn't on a picture of him. It was a picture of somebody else signed by Giuseppe as a little... That's a hard sell. Um, it's like the, the one from The Simpsons where they've got the rare picture of Sean Connery signed by Roger Moore. That kind of thing is like, eh, what have you actually got there? Um, even though I, I would love that. I'd love a picture of Sean Connery signed by Roger Moore. Um, but it's um it it's what happened. So again, uh, revolutionary Garibaldi. Now those from Britain will be going on oh, like the biscuit, yeah. Because bizarrely, I don't know if you know this or not, a lot of biscuits are named after revolutionaries. I don't know why, but they are. So the Garibaldi, you've got the Garibaldi, obviously named after Giuseppe Garibaldi. Uh, you've got the the Bourbon, which is named after the Bourbon revolutionaries in France, and then of course you've got the Che Guevara family assortment. I'm joking, but there are a lot of bizarrely. I don't know why. Biscuits are named after revolutionaries, and I don't know why. Um, but it was it was a tradition that happened, I guess. That's all for this one. Um, we will be back very, very soon with issue 63, where we will be building more onto the onto the hull. We'll be doing more work on the deck, uh, including more <sighs> foil stickers. Um, but tune in for that one. If you haven't yet, please remember to like and subscribe if you have anything you'd like to discuss with us. You can contact us at buildwiththeboys.outlook.com or you can pop it in the comments down below and we will get back to you. Um, thank you for stopping by again, but very, very soon with issue 63 in a world where you can be anything at all, just be nice and we will catch you very, very soon.